Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Friday. All right, let's talk some mountain weather, and it just doesn't feel like December in a lot of western resorts and uh, mountain towns right now, but eventually that will change, and that's what I'm focusing on. Like I did yesterday, let's talk about when the pattern will change. So here are my bullet points. Right now, we've got these very high rain snow lines, 7, 8, 9, 10,000 feet in some cases. Very unusual. When does the pattern change? When does the colder air come in? Well, it's like yesterday, on or after 1216. That still looks to be the case when we're going to bring in a storm system and a dip in the jet. We need the jet to buckle and move to the south, and I think that's what we're going to see. And so you can see the best odds of snowfall right here. So it is a bit of a wait uh, for Colorado, for Tahoe, uh, for Utah. It's a wait. Uh, till probably 12, 16, 12, 17, until we start to really get some colder air, cooler, colder air in uh, with this initial storm system. A lot of moisture up there in the parts of interior BC, though. It's still snowing up there. You can see the odds of snow start to really go up once we get close to that 12, 16 time frame for Montana and also Wyoming. Um, I want to show you water vapor satellite imagery. So this is the big picture. You're looking at uh, water vapor in the, uh, in the middle levels of the atmosphere. The whites and the blues are going to be your moisture. Look at the rich feed. This is this has really been the case. And then there it is kind of flowing up through the northern Rockies. But it's also flooding uh, a lot of the west with this incredibly warm air. And so we're fighting all of that. Now, eventually, you see this area of low pressure out here, what we need is a storm system to come in with jet stream support because then that secures that will we'll pull colder air in behind the storm. And that, again, give it about four days. And I think we'll probably get to that point. Um, here is the forecast radar. And I'm going to start this up at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today. And there's the flow. You can see how everything is going up and around uh, through the northern Rockies. All right, let me push this into the future. So here's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard today. I'm just going to go ahead because you kind of see how things are rolling here. There's 11 a.m. on Saturday. It's dry for a while with this big area of high pressure. Here's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday, December 14th. Um, let's just keep on going until we get something. There's 11 a.m. on Monday, December 15th. And there's 5 p.m. on Monday, December 15th. What do we got? Finally, we start to see um, some new moisture moving in with a storm system, and eventually we'll start to pull the curtain to the south into this direction, and we'll start to roll some cold air in and some new snow. Um, that's, that's what we're really looking for. That's what I'm looking forward to. All right, let's look at the pressure anomalies, and that'll really uh, drive all this home. So this is effective Monday, 1215. These are atmospheric pressure anomalies up in the middle of the atmosphere at about 18,000 feet. Massive high pressure dome across the west. A lot of warm air. The flow is being directed up here into the Pacific Northwest and B.C. Let's go to 1217, so two days after that. And look at what we've got here, a little dip in the jet. So this is after 1216. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a change. That high pressure has been eroded, and we're starting to see lower than normal pressures work their way in. That will pull cold air in behind it. So, But it's still very warm to the south of that with high pressure, higher pressures than normal. Um, let's go to the comparison. I told you I was going to do this. This is Christmas, 1225. We're going to do a comparison each day between the AI interpretation or forecast of this and the operational. So over here is AI. Here's operational. And I got to tell you, looking at the just sort of the general features, they're both somewhat similar. They both have a massive high pressure ridge here across the, uh, the heartland. And then they both have a trough or a dip off the west coast. So they both have those features. Now the question is how far inland will this dip in the jet move by 1225? We'll just keep watching it each and every day. It's a, it's a fun thing to watch. I want to show you the atmospheric river potential. This is integrated vapor transport over the next seven days roughly. So this is where we're at right now and this is effective up around the Washington Oregon border 46 and a half degrees north. So no atmospheric river right now. 
but it does come back. Here's the storm system that's going to swing the fortunes for parts of the west. That'll be a moderate to strong atmospheric river event, 15 into 16, and then behind it we start to see colder air and still a fair amount of moisture. Probably weak to moderate AR type situation there. So this is the storm that really starts to shift our fortunes right here. Um, let's look at total precip over the next three days. So I just want to get us through this weekend first, and then we'll take a long look ahead. Trajectory with moisture. This is not technically an atmospheric river, as I was just pointing out, but there's still moisture coming in. Um, but this is all primarily going to be rain. It's just too darn warm. Um, let's look at 10 to 1 snow, and just proving my point, it's just too darn warm. Unless you're up here on Rainier or Interior BC or the Coastal Range, you just ain't going to get nothing over the next few days. It's too warm. Let's talk about my forecast. Here's my official snow forecast. Now this is all of today through the close of business on 1215 totals. And there's just nothing. I mean, it's too warm. There's no accumulation here with any of this uh, at these ski resort elevations. Now there is accumulation up here into BC, interior BC, and Alberta. I mean, I've got over a foot at Whistler, uh, mid-mountain and higher. I've got a couple at Fernie, Revelstoke 6, Kicking Horse 9, Banff, I've got almost a foot, Marmon, I've got 9 as well. So there is some snow falling. It's way up to the north. Um, now watch this. So that's phase one. Here's phase two. This is 1216 through 1220. How things change. Let me go back. That's through 1215. There's 1216 through 1220. So after we get that 1216 storm, we start to lower the boom, and the whole rain snow line starts to get pushed to lower elevations because we're bringing in colder air. And look at the effect. Now we're talking feet, potentially up here. If we get that kind of cold air and it verifies, we're looking at one to three feet or more, maybe four feet. But that's what we like to see. Potentially uh, one to two feet here through the Tetons. You can see those bright pinks, those magentas. That's a foot or more. Um, looking at maybe up to 16, maybe 10 at Sun Valley there in Brundage, uh, northwest Montana, 8 to 15, uh, big numbers up here through BC, looking at potentially another 8 to 16 inches up there. And some of this does drop down into Utah, although through the 20th it doesn't look all that impressive. Potentially a few inches, just enough to kind of make a little bit of a change, a shift, if you will. And some of that will drop into Colorado, maybe three to eight inches there along I-70 and north. We'll have to see. I mean, this is a long way out. This assumes that we get the colder air. Um, but I'll keep showing you this the kind of stuff each day if you check back. It's fun to look at these changes that may be coming. All right, look at the northeast. Um, this this will get us through the weekend. There is some lake effect off of Ontario, Erie, and Michigan. There's not a lot of snow for the resorts. I mean, this kind of looks like maybe one to three inches up there. Uh, here's my forecast. And indeed, through the close of business on 1215, it is mainly a one to three inch snowfall at most of the northeast resorts. But it will be um, a lot colder out there than it's going to be in the west. Um, okay, let's go back. I'll show you the, uh, the big western forecast. And this is where we'll end it. So this runs through 1215. Not a lot to be had here. But then it's this period after it, right there, that's when we see the change, on or after 1216. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.